part of a personal mental practice that I do. Um, every time that I give any talk or I'm in front of a crowd, I try to use the time as a way to uh, speak radicalism into being, right? And so uh, what, I tr what I did was I wrote a speech. <laughs> uh, in my head, I was speaking into a, a crowd of people, like a huge crowd of people. And I think this is actually pretty, pretty awesome. It's pretty great. And I, I want to read that for you if you're cool with that. Yes. Right? <laughs> Hello folks, my name is Samantha Maria Rivera Fotos, and I am the founder of an art collective and studio service for trans folks in West Palton Village, Philadelphia. We are called Say 10 Studios, and we provide professional artistic collaboration to queer folks in the greater Philadelphia area. Satan Studios is emphatically present in the queer, anti-racist movement that serves to combat the disenfranchisement of the most marginalized. In providing affordable and quality multidisciplinary services to queer people of color, we recognize and publicly archive our personal mythologies as counterculture to a white, cis, hetero landscape. In composing counterculture art artifacts with queer creatives, we together promote anti-racist, trans-centric, educational, Activism. I'm going to stand up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we partner with Retrograde Productions, for which I serve as co producer. Retrograde Productions is a queer, trans owned production company that fosters the creative performance energy of queerdos who seek radical, non conformance art spaces to create art to an undefined audience. We navigate the cis white landscape by way of infiltration of Philly nightlife establishments. Our existence in cishet and gay cis spaces radicalizes the possibility of what art can mean to folks ignorant of the trans experience. Retrograde Productions produces a plethora of shows including Gender Query, a trans and non-binary variety show, Transcend, a queer trans utopic futurism art showcase, Slay Her, Philly's premier heavy metal drag show, and so much more. I am proud to be a resident photographer to those, to these exhibitions as well as several other queer trans-owned productions and companies. To name a few, there is Freakin' Queer, founded and produced by Icon Ebony Fierce, and Barry Extra Productions, produced and founded by Barry Tyler Moore. <laughs> Isn't it fun? <laughs> I consider these folks my family as much as they are business partners and creative colleagues. Today I speak on the shoulders of queer artists who have revitalized spaces in Philadelphia to the point of public recognition. I thank Mercury and Ron Binary who have paved the murky cobblestone paths with their sweat and tears and yes, even on occasion, their blood. Ron actually sells stage blood, if you're interested. <laughs> I, too, thank Paula Dean White, who has painted those stones with the same color as the brick in Marsha P. Johnson's hands. I thank icon Ebony Fierce, who is always willing to throw that brick when faced with injustice. I thank Barry Tyler Moore for the education that helps us focus our energy and fight with strategy. I thank Yari, who never fails to keep our rage ever flowing. And I am there to capture these moments, camera in hand, ready to document our lives and our art. We collectively and each individually radicalize what it means to exist as human, as the other. Today and for the entirety of our lifetimes, we are labeled as the other, the queer. We no longer shudder at these words, for the world has come to enjoy the taste of queerness. They've enjoyed the taste of our fruits so much that we make our way into their recipes at family dinner. Our clothes adorn the most fashionable. Our sounds can be found in any high school across America and other colonized nations. You see our art, our creations in our, you see our art, our creations in music videos, on billboards, on TV screens, and what a wonderful thing that is. And yet, queer trans people of color are our nation's poorest in our world's most at risk for violence. We are berated with rainbow capitalism at our pride events as we starve. We see TD Bank simultaneously tote equality for all and charge us an overdraft fee because we can't afford the roofs over our heads if we have them at all. Substitute any bank with Five Below, MAC Cosmetics, McDonald's, Nike. For the price of your survival, you too can rock the rainbow adorned sneaker of your dreams. Regardless of how big 
any corporation's float is, as long as anti-LGBTQ policy exists, our jobs as activists and allies have not ended. And no one gets to carry the pride of allyship if they haven't put food on a trans person's dinner table. If they haven't voted in favor for queer friendly policy, hashtag vote Bernie. <laughs> You're not anyone's ally until you've taken action. This is especially true for folks who are cisgender, white, and straight. If you have not used your privilege for anti-racist, inclusive policy and practice, you are complacent, and complacency will be our death. You may be wondering, how am I supposed to support someone I don't even know? My response is, hi. <laughs> I'm Samantha. I lost my spot. <laughs> also, I'm a queer person of color. I run a queer trans POC art collective that could use some money for folks who are more privileged than me or many of our partners. Before you leave today, ask for a business card. Ask how or you could counter. donate or counter. We'll get there. <laughs> um, stop by Dan or myself or at a table. We'll be selling goodies. Goodies, those are the calendars. They're lovely. The profits go directly to su uh, supplying queer trans people of color with professional creative material that will give them that much more of a chance at surviving in their chosen industries. Feel free to take a gander at the art queer folks and our allies have created in collaboration with yours truly. Uh, plug in Say 10 Studios on Facebook or Instagram and watch as we grow month by month, year by year. Today I supply this gallery with a few 4 by 6 portraits and headshots, all queer folks in one way or another, all in collaboration and in support of QT, POC, and our livelihood. If you enjoy their work or if you enjoy my work, uh, feel free to follow any of us. Um, if you see the pictures and you're like, oh, I wonder who that is, come ask me and I'll give you their contact info. Uh, and if you want to see more of their art or my art, feel free to uh, visit samanthasaiten.com. That's Samantha, S-A-Y-T-E-N.com. All right, you want to hear some poetry now? Yes. yes. Beautiful. <laughs> so before I start, um, I, I do those kinds of, of, of writings and like kind of speech writing uh, quite often whenever I have the the inclination to because I've been invited to something. And the reason why I do it isn't because you are necessarily the audience that needs to hear that information, um, but I feel that I need to be heard in saying those things. And so I appreciate you hearing that and being here. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna read a piece, it's called uh, Manga. If you kiss me right now, you taste mango on my lips. If you nibbled on my chin, you taste a juice I have welcomed since childhood. I remember swiping it away on the backs of my hands. It's sticky to the touch. Fingers rub against each other with frictions reminiscent of hard candy melting in your palm. I've washed those hands too thoroughly. If you laid your head on my chest, you'd hear a skip in my heart, a murmur I've been told was benign since I was introduced to the mango. <laughs> it murmurs sounds of ocean waves and the teeter tats of birds, whispers of tiny frogs singing koki, koki, koki. My heart beats erratically like the improv improvised drums of San Juan, and as I listen, my chin drips with liquids pooling onto my body. It is warm and smooth and sweet. If you kiss me right now, you taste repression on my lips, culture lightly salted like turkey at the dinner table for a family of gringos. I yearn for the flavors of home, for the sazon and adobo on the rice and julieta mommy used to make. I dream of who I'd be if I'd learned to love my culture as much as I loved the mango. But I haven't yet learned to love my own body, so who am I kidding? What does it mean? What means do I have to love a people when I fail to love myself? If you kiss me right now, you taste the rush of unknowing and the fear of knowing nothing. The bliss of potential in the wake of it's too late. Grandmothers are in graves. Grandfathers were never met. Mothers are tired. Fathers are broken. Siblings are busy and all too young to be burdened by the knowing of what they don't know. If you join me for Christmas, you taste love and acceptance. But the spices will be different. 
New recipes will have been introduced. Flavors, flavors will remain memories, but the coquito will still get you fucked up. If you kiss me right now, you taste spiced rum. It tickles at first like a flurry of wings. It's inviting. Then it quickly burns like the hot iron symbols of masculinity, like the stories your parents tell their friends about your feminine affinities. Reminiscing phases beat out of me, the welcoming of manning up and the casting away of being a pussy with presumptions of loving pussy, but secretly wanting your own. If you kiss me right now, you taste metal. Steel bars decaying, rust ridden like copper coins lost in the ocean. You taste entrapment, but don't start twisting metal because I am not trapped in my body. I'm trapped in your perceptions of my body. I exist on the cliff sides of gender where you are free and always close to jumping. If you kiss me right now, you taste melanin, hiding in mangoes that have been discarded under the rocky wafts of white skin. I see how young Dana Martin and Ashanti Carmen were when they were taken, and I count the years I have left. I look at their black skin and contemplate if I get a few more years because I've steered away from the sun, because I've been too afraid to embrace my summer tan whilst trans, and I play a game of privilege, of survivor, of who's strong enough, smart enough, passing enough to not be booted off the island next. If you kiss me right now, you taste mango. If you crawled over my body, you'd feel the slickness of its rind. If you ate me right now, you taste a hint of Puerto Rico. If you fucked me right now, you feel the conventions of nonconformity drip down your anatomy like mango on my chin, like fruit juice down my throat, like gandules lining my walls, like hot days in the barrios, like the Spanish restaurants you visit because you're bored, but I visit because I'm lost. If you kiss me right now, I taste like mangoes.